Hello and welcome back to our cart series. In this episode, we're going to start work on our weapon pickups. So the first thing we're going to work on today is creating the actual box itself with the question mark inside of it, much like Mario Kart. So let's take a look at how we can actually use the modeling tools inside of Unreal to achieve this effect. So we're going to first of all create our box using modeling mode. So we can create a box and place it in the scene. I'm leaving it 100 by 100 by 100 and hit accept. Go to polygroup edit mode in the modeling section. And in here, we want to select the uh, edges. So we might have to turn off the vertex and faces. Just select the edges. If you hold down shift, you can then drag and select all the edges at the same time. Once you've done that, we're going to bevel them. So we get a nice rounded uh, box. And we're going to do a bevel. And you can see it's given us the bevel edges there. And hit apply. And we're going to bevel again. Actually, no, I'll leave it like that because it'd be fine. Yeah, there you go. And that's what we're going to do for the box. Okay, it's very, very, very simple. Now, I want it to have this sort of cool, uh, like, inside-out appearance that we see in Mario Kart. So what I'm going to do is we're going to create a new material for this. So let's go ahead and make a new folder. And we'll call this one item. And we'll create the item box material. And to make it look that inside out uh, appearance, I'm going to create the material for it. And we'll just do a very simple uh, sort of. Actually, right before we do that, let's invert the normal tool. This is how we invert the box here. So in our modeling mode, if you go into attributes, I believe it is, yep, yeah, normals, normals, and you'll see there, invert normals. Click on that. You'll see now our box is this sort of like see-through cube type effect. Okay. I'm going to go back into selection mode, and we're going to give it our new material here. So this material here, we're going to add a texture, and if I do grid, do the grid shape. Mm, let's go for default white grid like that. And put in the base color. Okay. I'm going to change the UV, isn't it? So we've got more tiling going on. So if you hold on U, plug in your texture coordinate node when you click it in. You'll see in here you can change the tiling for the U and the V. If I change it to three, three, you go get more grids going through it like that. Okay. Now with that done, I'm going to also make it so the whole thing spins. And one thing we can do is we can use world position offset to change how it's rotating and spinning the object rather than animating it, it ourselves inside the engine. Because it's just a a visual thing it's not actually doing anything that we can interact with it's totally fine and probably better to do it as a material place so to rotate this thing on the spot we're going to use the rotate about axis okay and the first thing we we'll do is give it the normalized rotation axis so that's going to be a three vector hold down three left click and in the z here we're just going to put in one Put that into normalized axis there and we'll have to plug it into world position offset whilst we're here next we've got the rotation angle pivot point and position so the rotation angle this thing is going to be changing all the time so i'm going to put in a time node and put in the rotation angle there the pivot point is going to be the center of the object so we're going to give the pivot point here actor position world space and then for position here we're going to put in the world position of the object's pixels. There you go. And you can see this little lighting issue. That's just because of Lumen doing its thing and other things like that. But we actually want to slow this down, first of all, in before we go ahead and change anything lighting-wise. So time here, we're going to slow it down. I'm multiplying it by a 
fraction. So do 0 0.25, do slow it way down. Okay. Next is fixing this lighting issue, and that is mostly going to be done by changing how this thing's lit. So I'm going to change the shading model here from default lit to unlit. And we'll make sure the RGB is now going to emissive color instead. Okay. Apply. And now we're going to set that to our box render there. Effect. So other things you may want to do is say change the colors of things like that. You're more than welcome to. If you want to change it using this, uh, again, you can do, but if you might be better off doing is changing the grid to the black and white one, because then you can say the white note, uh, white squares are going to be one color and the black squares are going to be another color. And the way you do that is you can use an if node, for example. So we'll take the R value, make it into an if, and put that emissive color there. And if it's A is greater than B, we'll put in that color. And if it is equal to or less than B, it'll choose this color. Obviously, these are all black and white. But if I change this one to white, you'll see it go back to what we had before. But now we have these two customizable colors that we can swap between. Okay. That's just one way of doing that. There's a few ways. Um, and if you want to, you make these parameters too, if you like, as well. I'm going to just change the black here to sort of pinky purple. Like that. And quite it's a if you want it to glow, you just multiply it by a value as well. And you can make it glow as you wish. So change that to... Green and purple. There we go. Oh, the next up is the question mark inside the box. How do we do that? Well, that can be part of the actual object that we make for this thing. So we're going to go to Blueprint class. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to move this mesh I've made and put it into the items folder. So if I go click on the folder here, drag that and put it in items. So there it is. And I'll just rename it here. SM item box. Okay, now let's make a uh, blueprint class for this. Actor PP item box. <clears throat> okay, so this thing, we're going to have the mesh and we also have a collision area for it because I'm not worried about it hitting the mesh exactly. I want to change its collision area a little bit. So I'm going to have a box collision around it. And that's going to be slightly bigger than the actual mesh. Okay. Inside that box, we're going to have our stake mesh. And that'd be the one we just made. So we'll just put it there. And use it there. And as I said, we'll make this box here slightly bigger. So I'm just going to make that one. Do 100. Yes, do... Yeah, do 100, 100. Like that. Now, keep in mind that zero, 0 position will be on the floor of the track because that way you get an equal height every single time. So this mesh and box, you may want to change the height accordingly. So this is 100 in its extent. So you put 100 in the Z there, bring it on top of the floor. And because the mesh is inside the box, that's also going to rise up off the floor there too. Okay, so there's our box. Give it that material that we made as well. There we are. And now we're going to give it the question mark. And if you've got a mesh, great, put it in a different mesh. If not, you can use a text render if you like. And just put it in there. And there you go. So for the question mark inside the box, I'm going to use something called a billboard. And the reason why is that billboards will stay facing the camera. If I put that in there, and that's always going to face the camera. Now, by default, these are used by debug things. So you have to turn it on to 
be not hidden or turn it off rather to not be hidden in game. So over here, all you do is give it the texture that you want. And I don't think we have a question mark texture. So you have to just grab one quickly. And I said, if you want to use a model, you model instead if you like. But I'll <laughs> put in this texture here. So let's bring that down a bit in size. There we go. There's our item box. So let's delete that one and put in the actual actor. And there we have our item boxes. And we'll make it rotate that way. And then I can drag out the duplicates of this. Like so. There are our boxes. Now, basic functionality for the box is going to be pretty simple. And that's when it's an overlap. We want to get the cart for the overlap and award it the item inside the box. So in the functions here, we're going to do reward item. And reward item needs to know what cart it was. So let's give it a cart reference cart and go back to event graph on actor begin overlap if the other actor here we're going to cast to a cart and then call our reward item if that's also successful we'll destroy the actor there okay and reward item here we'll do it in the next video to actually give the item to So there you go, there's a start of our item box, and as I say, you can use anything really design-wise, I just copied a bit of what Mario Kart does. But in the next episode, we're going to start work on the actual contents of these item boxes. So how do we actually set up and arrange what the items actually are, weapons are, and how we can assign them to the player. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. Massive thank you to all our Patreon members and YouTube members for their continued support of the channel. Thank you for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.